So hello everyone. I see the number of participants is rising constantly. That's great to see. Um, let's wait another minute, minute and then I will start to kick off this webinar. <clears throat> Great. So a lot of people joining. Nice to see all of you. I guess uh, we're starting now. So welcome everyone to our second episode of the Tumivolt Charging Station webinar series. The subject of today's charging station will shed light on a highly, re highly relevant topic in the field of e-mobility, and that is uh, future battery materials. And we will answer if solid state batteries will be a game changer for e-mobility. My name is Marvin Stolz, and I'll be your moderator for today's session. I work for the Transformative Urban Mobility Initiative, TUMI, at GIZ, and uh, there we focus also on electric mobility under the new sub-brand TUMI Volt. But um, first, let's have a look on what we're planning to do over the next hour. And um, I try to show you the agenda, which is not working right now. Technical problems, sorry for that. Um, okay, <laughs> we have tested this, this out before, but uh, it's always like this <laughs> when you're live, uh, people, uh, things happen. So maybe I give uh, the mouse to, to you, Dr. Badenhagen, and if you could um, just press um, the mouse uh, to the next slide, then that would be great. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, so, um, here you can see our again agenda and what we are planning to do uh, for the next hour. And uh, after this short introduction, we will directly dive into the topic and hear a great input from our expert speaker, Dr. Badenhagen. Afterwards, we will go into the live Q&A session, which my colleague Lina will moderate. At the Tumivolt charging station, um, our goal is to charge up everyone's knowledge around all things of e-mobility. And in our first episode, we looked at the beginning of the production cycle of an electric vehicle, and we learned how um, raw materials for batteries are sourced and what challenges come with that. For those of you who are interested in that topic, um, we will provide the YouTube link uh, of that recording also in the chat box. So if you're interested, please feel free to watch it. And on our YouTube channel, you will also find the recording of today's session. Today, we are taking the next step um, of the process and we will explicitly focus on, on the battery itself. The battery, of course, is the heart of every electric vehicle, if you will, because it is as main or it acts as main energy storage device, as key component of every battery electric vehicle of any size and type. And since the battery technology is evolving very quickly, we will discuss what key trends are out there and what the future might bring us in terms of new battery technology. At the moment, lithium ion batteries are the current state of the art, but there's a new technology on the horizon, which is the solid state battery. And they are discussed to be a game changer for e-mobility applications. And today we want to find out if this image holds true. To do so, we are very happy to introduce you to our expert speaker, Dr. Ingo Badenhagen. And, um, Dr. Bahnhagen works for the Fraunhofer Institute for Manufacturing Technology and Advanced Materials, short Fraunhofer IFAM. And to give some more background, uh, the Fraunhofer Society is actually um, a German research organization, which is the biggest and most important organization for different fields of applied research and development in Europe. Um, the Institute IFAM has multiple core competencies like electromobility, for example, and Dr. Badenhagen is project manager at Fraunhofer IFAM for electrochemical energy storage, where he's also leading the research on future battery materials and next generation batteries. And with his experience, I think he's an excellent guest speaker for our series, and we are really happy to have you on board. So a very warm, warm welcome um, from our side. But before I hand over to you, just two more technical information before we kick off. 
First, there's a chat function in this webinar, so you're more than welcome to put your questions into the chat window. And after the present presentation, like I said, uh, we will go into the redirect everything that interests you to Dr. Badenhagen. And secondly, to improve this webinar series, uh, we will have a very short survey at the end of the webinar. So if you have a minute to spare, we really would appreciate your feedback. So uh, now that we have set the scene, uh, I believe we're ready to start. And with that, uh, I would kindly hand over to you, Dr. Barnhang. You have also, you have already the control over the mouse and the presentation. So the stage would be yours. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much for the kind introduction. And thank you for the opportunity to speak in this webinar. And I hope I can, um, can, um, live up to the promises that you already gave that I can show you something um, about the promises and the the prospects of the solid state batteries. Ah. So if sometimes I have like a little bit of delay for the uh, for the slide um, transfer. So maybe sometimes this um, will take some time. But I want to uh, tell you, as I said, about the prospects and, and the current status of the solid state battery development. And um, it was already said um, about, uh, I wanted to start a little bit with the Fraunhofer Gesellschaft in general. Uh, it was already said that we are one of the biggest um, scientific research institutes in Europe. Actually, we are the biggest in Germany, uh, was found in 1949. Um, including 74 institutes at the moment and around 28,000 employees with a research and development volume of 2.8 billion euros. You can see all the locations on the map of Germany where all the institutes are uh, located. In our case, uh, the IFAM is, is actually found in 1968 and joined the Fraunhofer Consortium in, in 1974, so six years after its founding. Uh, in the meantime, we, we had uh, some activities um, making new facilities, new research facilities, or home facilities in Bremen. But we have a, the second big part in Dresden and some, um, some smaller ones that are actually in Stade, Wolfsburg and Braunschweig. Especially here in Braunschweig, we are focusing and building up a battery, um, actually a battery um, uh, research institute really focusing also on the development of, of solid state batteries. And with this uh, short introduction, um, I want to um, show you the agenda. I've take some time actually to I have to do it my like this. Um, this is a short agenda what I want to do. Um, I'm just trying to approach this by the questions that may be the main topic or arising. And I will start with a short introduction about what is a lithium ion battery in general um, and why do we want or why do we need an all solid state battery with all the differences to classical cells, the promises of the technology, and also give an insight, a short introduction into the types of solid state batteries, hopefully without getting too much into, into detail. Um, so, and then the last part, and maybe the important question is, uh, why is it not here? Why can I not buy a solid state battery at the moment? So giving the challenges for the technology that still have to uh, be taken and have to be tackled. Um, and with finally then the expected time horizon from the point of view can say at the moment, uh, keeping in mind then all the problems that we have, or the problems is maybe too big, but challenges. So I want to start um, with the lithium ion battery itself. What is it? And I um, want to start a little bit with the, uh, with the um, image or the, the, the word battery. Battery is large and is taken for different sizes of batteries. And I want to explain a little bit when I'm talking about batteries, what I am talking about. And um, when, we are, when, when people talk about batteries, you have like the traction battery of a Tesla is shown here or something like that. You have in, your, in the car at the moment, the normal battery, which can also be a lithium ion battery. And these are batteries, but these batteries consist of, the, of more than one cell, battery cell. So in these 
cages, there are a lot of cells, and actually there are a lot of these kind of cells, these round cylindrical shaped cells. And here in one of these cells, this is also a battery, it's the same, you can call both batteries, but this is just a battery that is just one cell. It's, it's the same is true for the mobile phone batteries here. This is also similar to this one, just un uh, wound differently around the core. And when I'm talking about battery, I go inside of these cells, go down to the cell unit level and to the raw minimal need to achieve or to show you what is a battery. And, and you can see it here quite nicely. Actually, what we do need is a cathode, an anode, and a separator, separating from the name both the cathode and the anode from each other, electrical insulating so that we have no short circuits. The same is true for the cylindrical cell. It is wound around a cylindrical core, and we have the separator here, the anode, and the cathode. Actually, we do need some, some passive material like the cage, and we need some, some metal to, to connect this, the anode and the cathode with the, with the cage. But most of all, we just need these three components. And when we are concentrating, when I'm talking about batteries, I'm concentrating on this now, not taking the big one into account. And this is like what it's look in schematic, a lithium ion battery. So we have these three major components. We have like an anode, and a cathode, and a separator, electrical insulating both from each other. Inside of this separator is a liquid, is a liquid that allows us to conduct ions rather than electrons. And the idea of an electric chemical, uh, electrochemical energy storage system like the lithium ion battery is that we have a potential difference from uh, the anode to the cathode side. This is, you can imagine this potential difference as um, lithium ions in this case, who, where they want to be. Okay, we can say uh, when we need to charge the battery, so put energy inside, we are pulling the lithium out of its comfort zone somewhere it doesn't want to be, which is then the anode side. So we are pushing the, and by charging, we are pushing lithium ions out of the cathode into the anode side, achieving a potential because these lithium ions want to go back to the cathode side. And this is the potential that they have um, in the discharging. And this is actually then what's happening in discharging. We just can connect like cathode and anode electrically with some consuming consumer like a light or a car or whatever. And then the lithium ions go back, reducing the potential into the cathode side. So this is important. It is important that the, the cathode and anode are um, electrical insulated from each other, but ionically connected to each other so that the lithium ions can flow and close the, um, the um, circuit, the electric circuit, actually, so to speak. And when we are um, keeping that in mind, giving like an idea what we have on lithium ion battery, and why are we using the lithium ion battery? And, and most of you probably know this, the lithium ion battery is at the moment just the, um, the one with the highest energy density. Energy density, which is shown here in the Ragoni plot, is, is uh, depicted on the x-axis and the power density is actually on the y-axis. So an easy way of looking at this is from the automotive point of view, energy density is range of my car, power density is somewhat ac acceleration of my car or fast charging. So the, the higher the specific power of my cell, the more current, the more electrons can flow or ions in this case, and the energy density is the amount of electrons or lithium ions that can be, um, can be stored inside of our material. So we can see that the lithium ion battery is not only uh, the highest of the, from, from looking at these different battery technologies like uh, nickel metal hydride, nickel cadmium, which were a long time, the accumulators, the batteries, the secondary batteries actually, um, um, governing the market, then we have like the lead acid batteries, which are low in energy density, but very cheap at the moment. But going to high energy and high specific power, we can actually take the lithium ion battery. And this is actually also one of the big advantages of this uh, technology. 
rather than just having high energy density, we can tune our lithium ion battery being a very high energy one or being a very high power one. And this is because of the different materials that we can use in the cathode side. It's just like three examples of materials that we can use. You can see here the crystal lattice from each. It's not important how they look like. It's just important that we can tune the cell the way we want them. So we choose the active material that fits our needs best and we can directly take a lithium ion battery for our application. This is also um, this is the strength of the lithium ion battery. And this is also the com it makes it a little bit complicated when taking lithium ion battery just as one thing, just as this is a lithium ion battery, which cannot be really be said. It's just a, a group of batteries, which can be high power or high energy density. So this is good. Why do we want something else? This is like actually not the best battery, but as you know, especially when we're looking at the automotive sector, the people are always trying to get more energy inside of our cells, which mostly need, means a longer range for the electric vehicles. So I showed a little bit an energy plot here on the right hand side uh, where you can see anode material on the bottom, which is graphite in the most cases, and the cathode material on the top left hand uh, side. Um, we have the capacity on the x-axis, which is the amount of lithium ions that we can take up per, per weight. And on the y-axis, we have the potential, so the difference. And we want to have a, a, a very the higher the potential and the higher the capacity gives us higher energy. Well, energy is a product of potential and capacity. So our goal would be, OK, make an anode material, which is around here, which is like 10 times higher and make like a cathode material, which has maybe even higher potential versus lithium and gives us also a large capacity. Well, the development at the moment is that we can use in different anode materials. So this is maybe one of the most important things is that we can exchange the anode material, the graphite, with the metallic lithium, which would be then the, the general, the, the easiest way to handle this. This is like 10 times the capacity, which would increase the energy density with a very large amount. On the other hand, we can also think about high voltage cathode materials going up to five volt, even increasing them the, the, um, the energy by, by the factor of the potential. There are also already materials achieving this, but not stable enough for commercial cells at the moment. So, when we take this into account and without knowing too much about the technology itself, this would lead to an, an, a, man, a, a, a very high and very large increasing of the gravimetric and the volumetric energy density. For an understanding here, this is not the same plot that I showed before, but this is like gravimetric energy density on the x-axis. So uh, on the weight of the battery and the volumetric energy density on the volume on the, per liter um, of the battery. Um, most of the time, talking about um, automotive batteries, the volumetric energy density is more important because um, it has to fit somehow in the chassis of the, of the car. So it has to somehow fit in the car. And so the uh, volumetric energy density is the more important value for them as the weight is just, they say, okay, then we have like a better, better um, connection to the ground when we have a heavier vehicle. It is not completely independent of it, but volumetric is more important. And we can see that when we achieve like lithium metal batteries uh, like this, we even increase it going over 1000 watt hours per liter and achieving maybe 500 watt hour per kilogram. Going to all solid state batteries, we can even increase this. And I will go uh, into it why this is. We have different systems, which I'm even more in future. I will not go into detail with lithium and with lithium sulfur. So this is like the prospect energy density. The problem is that in these, under these circumstances, like the
I think is it just, just looked, yeah okay. yeah okay Dr. it's Brandmann. not just me I Sorry, guess you will join in a second Sorry about that uh, technical issue. Um, that's very unfortunate. We have never, we didn't never experience that before. <clears throat> so. I'm sure it'll just take a few minutes for him to reconnect. Yeah, I hope so too. <laughs> okay. Ah, there. Hello, <laughs> welcome back. Okay. okay. Yeah, Great I, I lost the connection. Next, sorry. Um, I don't know no what problem. happened, but well, now I'm I'm back again. I don't <laughs> I, I hope you, I don't know how long I have been. Where I, I hope you you saw the slide already and had done just the slide without some some kind of uh, audio. No, no, no. We you you've j just been away for uh, like thirty seconds. That's fine. So okay, that's good. Could be, repeat your last sentence. <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea. Okay. Okay. Good. Uh, sorry for that, but technical problems, as as we already all know, this this happens. Okay, so. As, as, as I said, um, high prospects, all solid state batteries, lithium metal, uh, give us high energy density. Um, but the problem that we have is that the liquid electrolyte is not stable under these circumstances, under these conditions. So with these high potentials, we get problems uh, using the system that we have at the moment. And this leads us to a very important point, like the stability. So we need some, some alternative solid alternative just because we're talking about solid state batteries there are also liquid alternatives but also solid alternatives need to be available but stability is a big issue when talking about lithium ion batteries and you all know that probably because the um, the images about burning cars actually going around a lot and i think even more than it is um i don't know necessary is maybe not the correct word but um I think it is pushed a little bit too much, giving the idea that lithium ion batteries are not safe technology, which is absolutely not true. It is just that in, in, um, in the um, means of automotive, we are not in the stable, stable region as we are with combustion engines at the moment. So we're using lithium ion batteries stably for a long time in, in, in laptops and mobile phones and everything else, but we are, we are achieving a new size in the um, um, in the size of the battery and keeping that in mind we still have this issue because we using the system that we are using and the thing is um, that we are not using uh, aqueous system so no water inside with the liquid that is inside our lithium ion batteries is not water why because the potential that we are using like a one cell a lithium ion cell is normally a nominal uh, voltage of around 3.8 volts. So this is a, this is a large number, and if we would apply these um, these voltages, these, these um, uh, standard voltages to uh, aqueous systems, we would get like these electrolysis. So we would actually produce hydrogen and oxygen rather than moving lithium ions around. And this is not what we want and this would also destroy the battery and would also be very dangerous because as we know then when we are producing hydrogen and oxygen together uh, with heat actually we can burn the same the, the other way around and forming water and actually would also ex explode to some extent and so there was a very very uh, good invention of a so-called organic electrolytes and organic carbonate this is actually a very stable system these are uh, solvents, organic solvents, that are stable to about four volts with lithium. But as you probably also know from other organic solvents like acetone, like ethanol, these are all flammable. And this is what, why this is happening actually, or why these cars are burning when the batteries are damaged or the battery is not, um, not uh, treated the way it likes to be. And this is like we need, as just from generally speaking, we are starting with like these these uh, fire triangles. So we need three things to get a fire, to make a fire. We need heat, we need a fuel, and we need oxygen. If one of these is missing, no fire will will be will be. Well, heat in a battery system can be uh, comes from different sources. There can be overcharging. Like when we are when we are like putting too much energy inside of this, damaging the cell, 
uh, when we are having too high currents for the system uh, on an acceleration in charging also this can also uh, lead to a heat uh, uh, production and we can have short circuits which also would also lead to heat production on the other hand the, the second one the electrolyte as i already said is a fuel it is burnable a uh, flammable material and um, we need this for the working of the cell but it makes it like giving it directly the fuel for this for the fire and oxygen can come from different sources maybe when we're damaging the cell making like a hole inside then we're getting oxygen from the atmosphere or also when our um, cathode is not completely stable or maybe uh, through uh, by wrong um, by uh, wrong handling of the cells we can actually get also the oxygen out of the cathode material so this is like the problem and from even further when we're looking at um, the energy coming out of something uh, uh, like a cell like this um, actually it is way higher burning than the normal storage energy so on the right hand side i showed now um, two two uh, columns and my, uh, one time the electric energy and one the thermal energy and you can see that the thermal energy is very higher very high and a lot higher and the orange box is like the cause of the burning of the electrolyte so this is a problem there's a very high energy system from electrical wise but it's even higher looking at the thermal energy so we have like a kind of a combustion engine inside of our lithium battery which is not helping because we're not cannot use the combustion for for making our car run so one of the easiest thing is okay we need to get away with one of these three things that we need for a fire and this is also one of the ideas of the North solid state battery we are getting rid of the fuel so we are just on in a schematically shown here is like the standard lithium ion cell we have a liquid inside in between the anode and the cathode side where the lithium ions move from from cathode to anode and what we can do now or what we're trying to do is replace this replace this by a solid that is actually not uh, which is not uh, burn up, not flammable. So we are also we, are, we have a non-flammable electrolyte, which should also be temperature stable, which is a problem for lithium, um, for classical lithium ion batteries, as um, as you probably also know that evaporation um, of of um, like something like like solvents that you buy in, in the, in the um, well, manufacturing market that you have like something like acetone which is um, evaporating very fast and we have like not a good temperature stability because of evaporation of the liquid so this would also be uh, gone if we would exchange the liquid by a solid and as i also said we get like high energy density by using lithium metal anodes and maybe even compactation of the structure so we can like you, I showed you, we have like these bound cells. We can think about different uh, uh, different manufacturing and different appearances for the solid state battery. And also reduction of passive materials, also increasing the total energy density of our final cell, meaning that the packaging is not as big as we need it for the lithium ion cell. Going to packaging, um, the, thin, uh, the thin assembly is possible, as I said, and we get some kind of flexibility when we are um, when we are changing also to a solid state, um, because we don't have like the liquid which is somehow fluent and and moving a little bit in our cell. But we have like a rigid cell that we can think about different appearances, and we have like three. Well, I'm not so happy that it's a little bit shifted here, um, but two different ideas of how we can build a solid state battery on the one hand side we have like the thin film battery this is actually something that you can already buy um, which is completely made by evaporation processes so we have like just micrometer thick layers of each anode cathode and a separator which is directly uh, through physical vapor deposition uh, sputtered on top of each other making very nice and very flat uh, appearances which can be very nicely um, built together to build cells um, the problem is and uh, um, have to excuse me that we have a low energy density but high here should be power density why because we have very short range 
So the lithium ions need to go only a short amount or just as a short way from anode to cathode. So we have like can apply higher currents um, on the cells than we can when we have longer waves. On the other hand, we have the thick film, which is like the, um, the direct um, translation of the lithium ion battery, the classical one. So we have like a composite cathode. We have a thick composite cathode, bigger than 10 micrometers, ideally like 100 micrometers even. Um, the problem here, or the, the, not the problem, but the challenge here is that we have like a three-phase composite. We have like a lithium ion conduction material, which has to be the solid electrolyte. We need some electric conduction, which is mostly apply, mostly done with carbon, these are the black dots, and some active material, which is actually the one, uh, in a perfect uh, world, we would just use the orange one because we get the best energy densities kind of calculatively just from the theoretically uh, value when we're just using the active material. So this, if we can um, build these cells, we get the high energy density cells that we actually want to have. And um, an intermediate between both somehow is a three-dimensional setup because we can actually build solid electrolytes and solid uh, cathodes and anodes. We can actually think about very complex structures where we can build cells into structural elements of, of planes, of cars somewhere. So we don't have like the cylindrical cells, but we can make like the whole chassis out of a battery, something like that. This is very flexible. We have like 3D interpenetrating anode and cathode idea. And with this, we can somehow um, increase the energy density from the thin film. We will not achieve the energy density of the thick film, but we can maybe get, in high, uh, get, can get the high power density from the thin film and increasing the energy density still. So, Giving all those um, those prospects, those um, things that we want to have an, an idea, um, I have not talked about the, the solid state uh, electrolyte itself. What does it mean and what it really is? Um, I don't know if you already know, if you're familiar with the, with the term electrolyte itself. So I tried to show it here um, in comparison between liquid electrolyte and solid electrolyte. Liquid electrolyte is nothing else than a, a solvent and a, a salt solvated in that solvent. So we have like the easiest way to think about as electrolyte is maybe is seawater. We have like uh, sodium chloride inside of water and this makes an electrolyte. So this sodium chloride is split into anions and cations and sodium and chloride and sodium cations and chloride anions. And these are moving freely around inside of this electrolyte. And when we are applying um, or moving, uh, applying a voltage on these cells, then actually the positive cations will move to the negative cathode and the negative anions will go to the positive anode because uh, different charges move to each other as we probably all know from physics uh, from the school. So this is very good and this is very stable and good working system. We get a good ion conduction because they can move around quite freely inside of the solvent. But as I said, we are not moving uh, just the cations, we are also moving the anions. So during the movement, these cations and anions hit each other, so to speak. They, they just block each other so that this, uh, the um, conductivity is somewhat reduced by this we have a very unspecific ionic conductivity. In an ideal world, we would just have the lithium ions that were, uh, um, go through the electrolyte and give us the important transport process for our battery. So this is a very flexible uh, system because we can exchange the solvent. As I said, we have in lithium ion batteries, we have like um, organic uh, carbonates, which are the liquid and we have as the salt is mostly lithium hexafluorophosphate. It's not so important, but this is one of the lithium salts that is mostly used in commercial batteries. When we're going to solid electrolytes, the same has to be accomplished by a solid, which is uh, in the first, when you think about maybe not as um, obvious as it is for the liquid electrolyte because uh, ions that swim around a solvent is maybe something that you can imagine, but we have to think that even in a in a, in a ceramic, so to speak, like we have it for, for in, in our, our dishes or whatever, there are some holes in 
the very um, in the microstructure of these lattices. So we have like like shown here very easy lattice where anions and cations are ordered and they, they are rigid. They are not moving. But some of these materials can be um, can be made that way that they have some holes and ions can actually move through this lattice by jumping from one space to another and so crossing the whole material. This is actually very nice. And um, besides the idea that this should be a very slow process, there are actually materials that are even that are as good conductors as the sol uh, as the liquids are. But generally speaking, this ionic conductivity is lower. The movement is like maybe if you don't have nothing in mind when you're thinking about ionic conductivity, is the movement ability of the ions through the material. And as I said, for the liquid electrolytes, this is also then good because we're just moving one species. We're just moving the lithium ions, which is very nice for our system. As I said, there are different kinds, and I don't want to go too much into detail in the separate in it because it's both a little too far. But we can say there are three main scientific uh, um, research areas that we can focus on that are from the material side for the solid electrolytes. We have polymers that are able to actually conduct lithium ions. We have sulfides and we have oxides. Um, the polymers are is, is like is a plastic, so to speak, uh, thermoplastic, as, we, as probably everyone knows, plastic materials we all use every day. And we have some spe special kind, it's like the PEO mostly, it's polyethylene oxide, which is able to somehow co uh, conduct lithium ion as well. Sulfides and oxides are both very rigid and has like a, have like these uh, exemplary um, uh, lattice structure, which is not important, but just to know that we have like here, we have like sulfide materials. We have the acid, which is the chemical thing for sulfur. And for the oxide, we have the same with, with oxygen. So um, this is like the different classes which that are actually developed and very far already in the development. So we have good materials in each class, but this is a trade-off system. Nothing, not one of these system is really good in all aspects. And I want to, to differentiate us in, in three aspects. The so one is the manufacturability. So the idea how I can build out of these cells with these materials, how is the stability um, during the cell, uh, the cell cycling, and how is the ionic conductivity of the materials. And you can see on the bottom that actually every material has an advantage, like the polymers are good for manufacturing because we can actually uh, easily adapt uh, the, uh, the production process from lithium ion batteries. Um, they are flexible. Maybe if they're thermoplastic, we can even apply, apply a little bit of heat to form the material. This works very nice. Um, the sulfides are um, the best ionic conductive material. Um, there are some compounds that have similar conductivities to liquid electrolytes. So we're very, very fast transport processes of the lithium through the material. And then for the oxides, well, they are very stable. They, they are resistant to water and to air. We, if we have like a ceramic battery, we don't have to worry too much about any safety issues whatsoever. But on the other same, on the, on the, on the other side, it's just like the manufacturability for the oxide is very low because most of the, mostly oxides are sintered with very low high, high amounts of temperature and this means that we have a lot of ions moving around, making it hard to build these cells in large scale and even to achieve a running cell with these materials because we have so we have problems like uh, moving different uh, moving of different metal ions inside of during the sintering process. And the sulfides are not stable in humid air because they react with water, forming H2S hydrogen uh, sulfide, which is flammable and also toxic, which is also not nice and even a little bit going back to the problem that we have with liquid electrolytes. And for polymers, which are good to, to build, well, they have the lowest conductivity of them all. So as you can see, it is not decided which material will actually be inside of a solid electrolyte. So we will have to see which makes the run. Um, I cannot tell you at the moment, but all, all materials are actually under investigation. And this is also directly leading to the last point is why is this not ready yet? Why can, 
why can I not use it at the moment, although the materials are already there. And as I said already, the manufacturing has a big part of that. So like we have the uh, manufacturing of a classical uh, lithium ion battery starts with mixing of these um, of the solid uh, compost active material, carbon conductive material, polymer inside of an uh, a high shear rate mixer with a solvent making a slurry, which is then casted onto a, onto metal foils and uh, cut it into these um, round cylindrical shapes where we get an anode and cathode, which can afterwards cut out, stacked in the cells where we have wrapped around with a separator, which is a white one, and you can see the, uh, the, the copper and the aluminum in the back uh, from the anode and the cathode put on top of each other. Then they are packed, in this case, in a so-called coffee bag, as it's aluminum polymer um, material, which is actually closing the cell. And in the last point, we are just filling in into the separator, which is laid in between the white one here, this, the electrolyte. And the thing is, up to this point, everything is stable in air. We can use this everywhere, make an easy build it in a plant, don't have any to take too much caution, uh, rather than the, the organic solvent um, that is used for the paste production. When we're going to the filling step, then we get to a point where it's air sensitive, so meaning that this is like, in, in our case, it's in a glove box where we where it's under argons, where we can fill in the electrolyte because we don't want water inside of the cell in the end, because we know that it's reacting with the electrolyte. When we're switching to uh, solid state batteries and try to keep at least most of the steps the same, the filling step uh, can be uh, removed because the solid electrolyte has to be already inside of the cell in, while producing anode and cathode. But we are adding also a component, like we have like now four components rather than just three components beforehand. And we had to somehow um, uh, need, uh, need to have three, three layers, then we have to have three roles, electrolyte, cathode, and anode. But we have to take everything, uh, everything is actually unstable in air because we're using the solid electrolyte, which is, if it's not an oxide material, which is probably not, uh, made this way is unstable in air. So this has to be done in a dry room, which increases the, uh, the cost of the production of these cells. And on the other side, well, we have a big problem with interfaces when we're building the cell. And this is like one of the, the major problems with solid state electrolytes. And you can see at the cartoon that even if we have like a very good conductive material, the runners are running very fast inside of the material, when we're getting to some kind of boundary, which can be between different particles and between active material and solid uh, and the solid electrolyte or carbon and the solid electrolyte, these determine the overall um, uh, reaction rate, so to speak, the overall um, velocity of the runners, because this is a bottleneck. And in case of lithium, um, classical lithium ion batteries, I tried to show in, in two different images. When we are putting like a, a liquid around like these stones, which should then, then symbolize our active material, this is like a very nice interface. It just wets all of the surface of the car, of these stones. And we're going to a, of a, to a solid state battery, which it can be, it's very nice, this can be seen in this candle that I found in the internet. It's like, okay, we have like these stones lying on top of each other, but we have a lot of holes inside the porosity and all where we have porosity and no connection between all these particles, we have no transport. We cannot have like, this is limits the efficiency of our cell. Generally speaking, this can happen, this happens in two major components. One is the macroscopic thing that we can say, okay, but when we are building anode, cathode and separator separately, then we have to bring them together. So we have to get here a good connection and here a good connection and we need to apply a lot of pressure to achieve this. This is the one thing. And on the other hand, as I already somewhat told, in the composite uh, cathode, we have three, we have the solid electrolyte, the active material, and the carbon. And you can see when, when we're taking into account or making them round, we get like these holes. We get these holes and the holes are dead material that we cannot use and they make it harder for the transport processes to take, uh, to take part. So, the process during manufacturing is that we actually don't want any porosity. 
which is different for liquid electrolytes because when we're making cathodes for liquid electrolytes, we want porosity because the liquid electrolyte is filled in afterwards and has to flood um, the, the whole cathode. And another problem is the lithium metal anode. I told you that the lithium metal anode is very good and has a 10 times higher energy density uh, capacity than the graphite, but unfortunately it takes has some more problems than uh, using than you uh, than not using because when we are comparing graphite with lithium, graphite is in so-called intercalation uh, cathode, uh, anode, which means that you can imagine it as a cupboard where the lithium ions are just put inside and put out. Uh, as, the, as much as we need. So this, the cupboard stays the same and we can just put in lithium and pull out. When we're using lithium metal anodes, this is different because actually we are rebuilding the anode every time we cycle the cell. So when we're discharging, we take away everything of lithium, put it in the cathode and nothing remains ideally on the anode side. And when we're recharging, we have to completely rebuild in a rigid system without flowing electrolyte on the current collector of the anode, which is very, very difficult actually. And this is actually the problem that we are changing the volume of the cell doing this and always making new interfaces. As I told you, the interfaces are a big problem. Next, lithium metal is also not completely stable at the moment. Lithium metal is very reactive, very reductive. It's one of those uh, uh, materials that actually reacts with everything and wants to reduce everything. So. This is a little bit also difficult. There are some of the, the oxides are very stable towards lithium and some of the sulfides are also already very stable, but we need better stability also to realize. So this metal anode is one of the key things to actually develop if we want to have a stable solid state battery. So in summary, what are the key, the major challenges for the solid state battery? Is, so the reason why it's not yet available, it's a manufacturing process because we need homogeneous non-porous components. Uh, we need to have good interfaces during cycling. So by rebuilding the anode and, and having volume expansions inside of the cell, these need to be compensated uh, by one way or, the, uh, or another, maybe by applying pressure on the cell. And then the lithium metal itself, the uh, metal anode itself needs to be completely stable inside of the cell. So this is like the, the problem, this is the challenges people are working, the big automotive uh, companies are working on um, and some smaller startups also working on. And, and this is also what I want to end with a little bit, this like the, the idea when will, will it all, is it even possible or are these challenges too high? And from my point of view and also from the point of view of the car manufacturer, it is possible, it, but, but it will take some time. But if it is developed, we can actually say, okay, we have with these higher energy densities and with the safety increase that we get, we will really have a game changing in the electromotive um, sector. And um, I, I just copied three, um, three sources from Toyota, BMW and uh, um, Volkswagen. Um, giving different time horizons for the development on, of their electric car with a solid state battery. There we have like, Toyota is, is, is very ambitious. They wanted to show actually a car in 20, in the, at the Tokyo Olympics in 2020, which are actually postponed to next year. Maybe they postpone uh, also their car, which is probably not, not a bad thing for the technology also. As we can see, uh, the Germans are more conservative in their uh, guessing. It's like 2025, 2027 till we have like this kind of technology maturing. So also from my point of view, this is like the time horizon that we have to expect. We have to wait at least five more years to have like an advantageous high energy or solid state battery. So it is possible to build solid state batteries nowadays, no problem, but the advantage over the classic lithium ion battery is, is just not high enough to, uh, for them to build them into cells and um, to make like increase their range. And with that, I'm, I'm done and I hope I can um, also answer your question and um, I could lead you through the, uh, through the presentation and you could understand everything. Thank you very much, Dr. Badenhang, for that very detailed uh, presentation. I personally learned a lot um, about the challenges ahead, but I think uh, at some point we will get there uh, that we have the solid state batteries in the vehicles and on the roads, uh, but to not steal any more time of the Q&A session, I would um, hand over to Lina now who will moderate this. Thank you.
Thank you so much. I see some questions are still incoming. Um, I will start with some of the questions that we've already received. I think one that might be burning on everyone's uh, tongue is, how would you answer the question of this webinar title? Will solid state batteries become a game changer for e-mobility? Yeah, this is, uh, I wanted to, to somehow uh, give that in the last sentence a little bit. Well, yes, if, you, if the challenges can be tackled, if the lithium anode, this is one of the major problems, if, if the lithium metal anode can be stabilized in the system, then yes, then we have like um, energy densities around 1000 watt hours per liter. And then we can like have, um, we get to uh, ranges for electric vehicles that are similar to combustion engines. And when we are at that point, then um, actually we can um, see it as a game changer. There are different things that we have to keep in mind. And um, this is also what I'm always rooting for. The lithium ion batteries are actually good and maybe even good enough at the moment for the electric mobility um, that we are using it. Um, this is most of the time um, also said, and this is true, that from the, from the driving profile that we have at the moment, that nobody needs high range vehicles. But this is like what the market wants. And when, when people talking about an electromobility, always keep in mind to say, yes, I just, I need to drive like 1000 kilometers with my car without, without recharging or refueling, so to speak. Um, most of the time, I guess it is enough for the consumer market. And I don't even know if, um, if afterwards, because of the material prices that we have to keep in mind when we're changing the, from, from the liquid electrolyte also to the solid electrolyte, maybe the production processes, as I showed, when we're going to a dry room, cells will become more expensive. So we get like a safety increase, but maybe we have to keep in mind that the price for these cells will be higher at the, in the, at the beginning. So maybe it is not... There is for every, this is like the lithium ion battery itself is, is just a flexible thing. For every application, a right battery. And the, lithium, or the solid state battery also fills in a gap, fills in a gap for a very safe battery if we can build it up and for long ranges that where it is necessary. Maybe then the cost is not in the normal consumer market, but it fills another gap for battery vehicles. So this also touches upon the question of um, what kind of vehicles this kind of battery is most suitable for. So what I'm, I'm thinking I'm understanding from your answer is that uh, solid state batteries might be um, a very helpful innovation for certain types of mobility, but they might not be the most necessary innovative step for say passenger cars that we have on the road, for example, in cities. Yeah. Yeah. This is like the idea I uh, generally speaking, I would say yes. Um, we have to just, think about um, how to build the right cell for the right vehicle. So I would say, yes, we can also make like solid state batteries for the consumer market, but these batteries will probably also provide just ranges of around 200 kilometers. Because we are, from my point of view, we don't need more. There is, this is something like we have to, to change mobility itself, going away from individual, individual mobility for everyone to more like buses, more like, public transportation and have like just cars for, for if you have like for, well, I'm, I'm living in a village nearby, like satellite village of a, of, of a big city of Bremen. And this is something where you maybe need a car, which an electric car can use it very well and can have like, okay, I drive every day to, to my work. And then, then I have a recharge station, maybe outside of the city where I can, where it's a large uh, parking lot where I can recharge my car, take like the tram to my working place, go back and can then drive back so we have like a mixture between individual uh, traffic and 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 um, transport and, and public transportation and i think in this case solid state batteries can even and in this case the prospect for solid state batteries would be safety because this is also the what i would point one try to point out in my presentation safety is a big also a big potential of the solid state technology besides the higher energy energy density this is like just when we're talking about this and, and trying to highlight solid state batteries and it is a safe high energy material uh, system and this is like true to some extent uh, but we have to keep economic things in mind if these cells are really uh, they are just as good as they need to be for every application to keep the price low this is just the market giving us that and so i would say yes Solid state batteries in different, so it could also be that maybe for consumer cars, it is a polymer batteries and for different, for other, where it's more, where we need more energy, it's like sulfidic or oxidic materials. So there will not be the 
lithium solid state uh, lithium ion battery as it is at the moment, not the lithium ion battery, as I said, mm -hmm. because we have different energy or power levels in the energy density. So, yes, we have to just differentiate from e every kind of um, vehicle. And I think you now also touched upon another question that um, someone raised, and that was the question, how would the technology of solid state batteries affect battery prices? And I think that aims at the question of the manufacturing process being more complicated, more time consuming, but then again, also the um, the energy density, as you mentioned, going up um, yeah. for the battery. Yeah, this is very important, actually. Um, we have to... Um, well, the aim for the classical lithium ion battery, I guess, is the break point that is always called. It's like we have like $100 per kilowatt hour. Something like that is, is always, it's mostly an, uh, de um, denoted when we are talking about where we want and when battery car will be the same price somehow than combustion engine cars. This is like, and we, at the moment, uh, due to um, optimization of processes, the battery prices are falling down. It's also driven by some monopole things, but generally speaking, the prices are falling. And when we are shifting to solid state batteries, in the beginning, we have to expect that they are more expensive before these optimization processes, scaling effects will take, will take up as it, it does in the lithium ion um, uh, at the moment, because then you have to keep in mind, okay, now this, this system, oxide, sulfide, polymer is working, and then you are optimizing the production of these kind of batteries. So the first cells as prototypes normally are very expensive, and we will then, for each, depending on the market, if it is for sh smaller vehicles, for larger vehicles, it will uh, also fall, uh, fall down, the price will also fall down. But generally, yeah, I would also say the first solid state battery uh, car vehicle will be probably even more expensive than they are at the moment. Mm -hmm. And um, because you again mentioned the, the different type of, types of vehicles, there's one question here um, that asks, what about the freight market? So trucks need longer distance and a lot of power. Will this be possible in 2025 already? Sort of an estimate because we just spoke about the timeline. Yeah, well, the thing is, the good thing for, for, um, for trucks is um, um, that we actually um, have not so much limitation from the from the weight and also from the volume, so we can put more batteries inside of, su of such vehicles, so to speak, and we can also tune the lithium-ion battery material using something that is more that is mostly in this kind. This was like mostly it's the lithium-ion um, ion phosphate. This is the material that is often called. This is not as high energy, but has very high stability, and we can have high cycle life and something like. That. That. And we can do this also for solid state batteries. Um, I'm not so sure. I'm also, um, when we're talking, uh, uh, talking about trucks itself, um, well, we are coming from, I'm mostly talking about electric vehicles, but we have to keep in mind also different, um, um, different techn technologies. And I think that, um, for example, that um, fuel cells are a very viable thing for, for trucks, especially because they can, they have to do they have to recharge fast. They have because of the uh, transportation chains, like just in time delivery, we get you cannot change a uh, charge like eight, ten hours mm -hmm. in a truck. Probably you have to have like bigger gas stations. And I'm a big fan of saying, okay, this is like true for for the whole change of mobility. Every vehicle, its own electric device or its own power source. It doesn't have to be oil as like or gasoline as we are using it at the moment. We can like have okay when we when we need it for 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 transportation. Then we take like hydrogen and fuel cells where we where we have like big um, gas stations where we can just refuel our our trucks so to speak. We don't need a net that we would use for need for consumer cars. Um, and then we can use them, and, and and I think this is idea. We have to take every we have everything that we have. We have like also Germany is also repowering their the fuel cell um, um, financial support very big time, making power to gas and power to uh, for hydrogen, and even increasing the um, the idea the, the the importance of the fuel cells itself. So there are electric vehicles, there are fuel cell vehicles, and both have their um, have their need. And for different applications, they are just just good for. I don't think that it's for consumer market. They will not be as good for fuel cells. We will probably stay with battery, but uh, vehicles. We have to reduce the amount of cars in general because 
there are also some calculations how much material we will need if we exchange every car uh, every combustion car with an electric car coming from lithium from cobalt material side you had this in the, i guess in the last session when you're talking about the cobalt this is a very rare material very difficult material itself also so very open system and from my point of view for, for small consumer cars solid state batteries are somehow viable um, for large cars, uh, for trucks, I would go with or also even buses. Also, I'm I'm a friend of a fr uh, friend of, of buses with 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 over we like with trams where they have like uh, some some connection to the to the grid mm -hmm. store uh, grid energy. And yeah, and this is like the thing. And batteries, yeah, safe batteries for the consumer will be a big step. So um, I'm kind of picking and choosing the questions as they fit to your answers. And uh, someone raised the question, um, what you think about their viability for the for aircrafts? So when you make a distinction, what kind of technology works best? Do you think solid state batteries are then a form of battery that's actually considered or could be considered for aircraft? It, 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 this is a good question and it depends very strongly on the um, on the power level of the battery because for aircrafts, the most important thing is to get it from the from from the earth to the, into the air, and it needs a lot, a lot of energy and a lot of power to do so. So, the question is: Is a, a lithium-ion battery able to make a plane fly? Well, mm -hmm. it is probably it will be enough to to keep it in the in the air. This is not the problem because the energy and also the power level that we need. For, for cruise flight, it's not as high, um, it's not so much. So this is like where I can say, okay, this will work. This will also work with solid state batteries probably. This is also tested now with lithium ion. I guess there was uh, in the news just, just a few weeks ago, the first largest uh, personal uh, aircraft that was started in, in America, I guess. Something like the CESA. There are some, and we have also some connections to, to, to Airbus. Uh, in, with uh, traditionally one of our um, customers in, in Stade, we, we are developing a lot with them. And also thinking about electric flying. Uh, but we have also here, the question is, can we really have um, a battery with these high power um, needs for starting um, the, the, the uh, plane? And at the moment, I would say solid cell batteries are not the best for this because of the lower conductivity of the materials. The lower conductivity of the materials mean, in general, generally speaking, higher res resistance. And if we have mm -hmm. a resistance, and and high, if we need high power, we need a lot of current. And when we go by Ohm law, um, the the potential is the resistance times the um, the current. And if we increase the resistance, the over potential, the potential increases also. So the problem when increasing the over potential is that the energy drops. And we probably end up with not enough energy to start the engine. So I would say, for at the moment, with these materials available from from scientific point of view, I would not go with uh, solid state batteries for flying. But this depends and can change directly as soon as we have a material like the sulfides, which is as conductive as a, a liquid cell. And we can also think about that. Okay. If you don't mind, I think there's about three more questions, so I would suggest that we do a little bit over time just to um, go into these as well, because I think they're quite interesting. Um, so now, basically, your your industry, um, I want to say gossip is being asked, because someone asked about um, the new kind of battery that Tesla has mentioned that they are developing, and that would give them a huge advantage over other car manufacturers. Do you know what kind of innovation they're talking about? Is this the solid state battery that they are using? Um, yeah, I, I think I think this is always like uh, gossip is a good word for this. I would say it's always a little bit what what uh, Tesla says and what Tesla does is always a little bit um, driven by getting money from investors. So I. I I don't know it exactly. So just just to be clear here, this is just like a little bit guessing. And um, I guess it goes uh, towards a different. Uh, I guess I wow, oh, this is going towards exchanging the anode side. So it is like I said, lithium would be the way to go, would be where we want to be. But there are also differences in between. We can use other materials 
uh, alloying materials like uh, zinn and um, and silicon. These are also very good and very um, have a very good um, specific capacity. And when we're using them, we can increase also already uh, the energy density of classical liquid uh, ion uh, lithium ion cells. And I guess this is more the way to go. They are trying to develop the lithium metal cell, maybe even with liquid electrolytes. As I said, I was talking now about the solid state electrolytes. Um, there are also some liquid alternatives trying to be developed like ionic liquids to put inside, which are more stable, not as flammable or not flammable at all. Um, to, to have also the, the inter interface problem, but they are also not stable and the development is somehow not as not as far as it's for the solid state uh, cell. So I would say, okay, I guess it goes in the direction of the silicon anode. But it's like okay. my, my guess, my guess, <laughs> okay. Yes, eventually we will find out. <laughs> yeah, Hopefully. Well, if he tell, tells us, but yeah. Um, and then there's uh, more questions I think that we can put into, into sort of one. Uh, one of the participants asked, what about the environment, environmental safety of these types of batteries? And I think that kind of correlates also with the question, um, how long is such a solid state battery usable? So, you know, what, what kind of range can you go with it before you need to um, repurpose it or even recycle it? And I think um, the question, is it actually recyclable? What kind of environmental difficulties could arise with this technology is also very interesting to participants. Yeah. The it is, and, and recycling becomes more and more viable and more and more interesting field as more lithium ion batteries get into the market by more electric cars entering the market. Um, one thing is always second life when you're th thinking about just taking the car, uh, the battery out of the car and putting it, for example, into grid storage systems so that we have like stationary systems where we need to, we, we maybe can store. Um, the overproduction of wind energy, so to, uh, to speak. So we need some some energies because when we're thinking about car um, batteries, um, they are also declared that when they have like around 80 or 75 percent of their uh, um, capacity of the energy. So there's still a lot of uh, potential inside of these batteries to store energy, but it's just not enough for the car for the very high demands of the automotive industry. So they can say, okay, well, this is like the cycles that they live, but in the grid storage, they can have like a second life. They can just go on and just be reused without building them or destroying them. Destroying them is always a little bit more difficult. Um, at the moment, um, as far as I know, it is um, not economically feasible. This is a big problem because from the environmental point of view, you would try to get everything out of it. but the, the problem is that the raw materials are at the moment too cheap to recycle these batteries. This is, this is the only material that would be um, useful is the cobalt because it's one of the most expensive um, parts of the battery itself. So if you would make a recycling, like building, destroying batteries, taking everything out, getting the cathode out and ripping the, getting just from chemical etching the cobalt out again and, and recycle them and re sell it. But this is only feasible at the moment for cobalt, not for lithium. Lithium is too cheap at the moment still. It's not feasible. And um, this will change. This will change with the, as soon as the, the material becomes rare as, as often. So then it will change. And, and unfortunately, for the environmental point of view, this is not done. And they are just put into the oven and just burned. And this is a bad thing for the environment. And this a thing we have to keep in mind, have to work on, but this is unfortunately driven by the market. And um, and this goes uh, a little bit back then to how does it change a little bit when we are thinking about solid state batteries? Well, not that much, I would say. Um, maybe it's even harder to recycle them because we have not these um, open porous materials, but very rigid systems, uh, very tightly put together where we have to maybe even get rid of more materials to to get where we want to get the the elements out that we actually want to have um but we will not be able to somehow use uh, simple um or, or core components of the same so we will always have to somehow find a way of um of recycle of of reusing them well this will then depends we, again on the technology that we're using. When we're using polymers, probably it will be easier. When we have like sintered pellet 
electrodes which are very stable we will probably not be able to get them at all because this is like if you're thinking about porcelain how do you want you you can cr crush them maybe but then you have to still have some bricks out of the same material so this is like very stable but this is very stable so this is it is also hard to get as hard to make them it is as to hard as hard to get it out again okay so that's interesting i find uh, to to learn that it's not really clear what the recycling process would be like for a solid state battery um, and then I have one last question, which I think is also interesting. Um, it's about the charging characteristics of solid state batteries. Mm -hmm. uh, one participant wants to know, do solid state batteries have the same charging characteristic like current lithium ion batteries? So fast charging up to 80%, but then only followed by slow charging until you reach 100%. Um, uh, this, is, um, the, uh, this is the aim, the goal of the development. Um, the thing is these, um, charging cycles these way the the charging is done uh, for lithium ion batteries depends strongly on the materials used on the cathode and on the anode side mm -hmm. so as long as we use the same materials in the solid state batteries the same active materials uh, it, it should be the same but it depends on the um on the resistance again it depends on the resistance same as for the uh, of the um, of the fly of the of the plane it's the same when we need high power uh, we don't we cannot allow high um, resistance in the cell so the it just goes back to the ionic conductivity of the material and so if the material itself is as conductive as the liquid electrolyte then we should have the same um, setup of uh, charging it can but it can also be differently when we are thinking about the lithium metal anode because the lithium metal anode as i said is rebuilt every time and when we're charging it onto a very rigid flat surface it can form dendrites dendrites are thin needles going through um, through the electrolyte forming short circuits and this is what we don't want because we're killing the battery with, with that and um, so probably even uh, in the beginning, as long as we don't have a good answer to the lithium metal anode, I would say it will even take longer to recharge a, a solid state battery with a lithium metal anode. So we don't have fast, even not fast charging to 80%. So that's very interesting. Well, from what I understanding is that we know solid state batteries will have higher power and energy density, but a lot of the other questions like charging characteristics, recycling processes, are still sort of up to the development of that type of uh, battery in terms of what hard materials will be used and what the the actual battery will look like. Is that correct? Yeah, it's, yeah, it is correct. Um, energy, the power density will probably be in the beginning even lower than it is for the uh, for the classical lithium ion battery. The energy density will rise. Yes, um, this is the, the prospect. The energy density is always the, the goal. Uh, but we don't know as long as it is not completely clear which kind of technology is inside of the battery of the solid state battery we cannot completely uh, be sure um, how we have to charge them and this will have to has to arise um, similar to the development of the lithium ion battery itself the liquid uh, battery itself this is like um, when we were starting in 1991, I guess Sony um, released the first lithium ion battery cell. And then we have like the battery management system, which has to somehow regulate the charge um, how, somehow on different cells and see, okay, I, I'm not allowed to overcharge. I have to somehow, I'm allowed to go high with the potential going with, with constant current, constant voltage um, charging, something like that. It is very difficult from the from the charging point and from the um, from the using um, from from the using from the manual so to speak of the lithium ion battery it's very complicated it's different from that acid which is just charged it's not not so much mm -hmm. not as complicated but the, the intercalation process is a little bit more complicated because it depends on different processes going inside of the active material because the lithium ions can go fast inside but then the movement inside of the material on, on the backside, so to speak, is slow. So you have to take that in account. You can put something fast inside, but then you have to wait till the diffusion comes, uh, put, um, go, goes in and you can put even more inside. This is the reason for this. You can, you can have like, okay, it's like uh, thinking about like, when also for, for traffic jams, when you have some something thinking about traffic jams, it's also 
when you have a lot of cars on the street, at some point they will just, with, even without, a, uh, without an, an accident, it will just clock, it will just stop because too much is coming. And this is also the same here. When we are charging too fast, too much, too many lithium ions are coming and it will block. This is then the over potential, it will stop. So you can think, okay, it is full, but it is not because we are not waiting for the chemical processes inside of the material to take part. We have to account for these. These are physical limitations of the system. This is, we cannot, we cannot accelerate them. We have some, some um, engineerings that we can somehow put different um, porosities in the material, make the particles smaller or larger for different applications. You can tune this a little bit, but at, at some point you have always physical limitations. Mm. Great, thank you so much. I think that's a lot of uh, information upload. Um, I think at this stage we can close the Q&A. Thank you very much, Lena and Dr. Bagenhang for that really interesting discussion. I, I learned a lot and also thank you to all of our participants who, who asked these um, burning questions. And uh, of course, um, um, I mean, we don't need a follow up at this time. Um, <laughs> since we have asked all of our questions if there are open questions we try to follow up these uh, via email and um, if you want to learn more um, you can f about to me you can also find uh, us on all social media channels and i will also show you how they will look like and um, of more of course there's more to come in the future uh, on this platform on this to me vault charging station um, webinar series we will um, have a lot more coming up, great topics, and um, I don't want to uh, spoil or anticipate the uh, excitement, but uh, maybe we'll talk about solar-powered electric vehicles in the future or the battle between hydrogen and battery electric cars, which we touched upon today as well. So um, we hope you will stay tuned for the next Tumivolt charging station uh, webinar to, to get electrified about the pros and cons of e-mobility. And on that note, um, I'm saying thank you very much and see you soon. Bye-bye. See you soon, everyone. Thank you. Bye.